we're going to look at the work of Devin Allen. He's a 26-year-old, 27-year-old photographer um, from Baltimore, Maryland. And, you know, we've been talking a lot about owning your own narrative and documenting your own community um, and the importance of that. That's but the whole, the whole point of us being here is, right? Yep. Um, Devin Allen from Baltimore decided to, during the, pro there's been protests, we've been talking about these protests and the conflict between people of color and police in the United States of America right now. Um, there was a, a police killing in Baltimore, Maryland this year of a young black man. Yeah, named Freddie Gray. Named Freddie Gray. Yep. And after the death of Freddie Gray at the hands of police, while he was in, in the hands of police, police officer, um, protests rioted all over Baltimore, right? The place where Devin Allen was from. And so before the protests had started, Devin had used his Instagram account just for photos of his friends. He'd been posting nice photos of like flowers and sunsets and skies. And then the protests started to happen and he was watching the news document his community about these protests. And he was like, this isn't right. I have to, I have to use my Instagram account to share with the world who's watching this what I'm seeing in my own community. He wanted to show a more balanced view of these protests. Um, so he started taking photos with his phone and with a small little point and shoot camera that he had attached, like, um, you know, it went straight to his phone. So some of his photos were taken with, directly with his phone and some with a little, um, like a, what do you call it? Uh, like, the, when it goes directly. Like a GoPro? Like a GoPro or something right, right. like that. Like um, a wireless. Um, like a wireless, yeah, yeah. a wireless feed. So it shoots and it goes directly to your phone. And he started uploading to Instagram with like a hashtag, like Baltimore. So, you know, he was, so people who were on Instagram and following the protests happening were watching his photos come up on Instagram. And then people like Rihanna and Beyonce started reposting his photos from the po protest on their own Instagram accounts. And we're like young photographer documenting Baltimore. And he became like this overnight celebrity, right? Like this overnight success because big time celebrities started finding his work on Instagram and started sharing it on their own accounts. And then he posted this one photo, which we'll show you a video, um, of one of the protesters running away from the cops. And one of the editors, photo editors from Time Magazine found his photos on Instagram, called him and said, hey, can we use your photos that we're seeing on Instagram? on the cover of Time, and can we give you a huge feature in the magazine? Happened, made the cover, changed his entire life. He's been traveling the world ever since. People pay him to shoot. People send him on assignments right. all the time. With his phone. With his phone, and he's not even 30 years old yet. He's That's still right. in his 20s. So it's just showing the power of cell phone photography and just the power of documenting your community and just like, he had no idea that this was gonna happen, and this happened this year. His career has sort of like taken off at this point. So I'm going to show you, we're going to show you a video of yeah. Devin Allen, a little bit about his background. It's a short clip, um, and then we'll go into a little bit more about right. his work. But just using, but just in terms of using social media as an outlet, right? So maybe you're not posting photos of protest in Ethiopia. Maybe you're just showing your community, but just using, but just the idea of having this platform to engage with people around the world who may never have the chance to meet you, right? And who may never have the chance to know who you are, but when you're putting your work out, so now if I wanna share with someone, when I go back home and I'm sharing, I'm following you on social media now, I can share your work and say, hey, look at this photographer that I met in my class. Here's his work on Instagram. Here's her work on Instagram. And you can connect in that way like never before, right. right? And engage in that way like never before. 100%. And everybody, I mean, social media gives you really the power to raise awareness. That's really what it gives you. You have the liberty to raise awareness. And you know what? It doesn't always have to be about something that's political. You know, I mean, just your culture, everyday life here. Again, some things I've spoken about, you know, to a lot of you, just the everyday culture of Ethiopia, things that all of you do every day, the food that you eat, you know what, the greetings that you have, I mean, the love that's shown, two men shown, you know what, holding hands, we don't see that, the world doesn't see that. And then just in context, what I've realized a lot of you, um, and when we look at images, when we share group work, you guys love work that shows the comparison to youth with history in Ethiopia. 
um, young people engaging with historical things in the country, like um, the teapot and then yep. the new the, the coffee machine and then the new coffee machine in the back. Um, the <laughs> carriage walking down with the line with the taxi cab driver, waiting for taxi cab drivers. So that like sort of comparison between the two worlds of the new Ethiopia Absolutely. and the old Ethiopia. Right. So playing with things like that, you know. And um, again, all of these tools are really at your disposal. So thinking about just what this young man, you know, what just saw, what he felt the obligation to do, and look what happened. I mean, celebrity saw his work, posted it, and then all of a sudden, plenty more people paying attention to him. I mean, the same thing could be about you. I mean, the young man who in, in, uh, in Texas, was it Texas, the young guy who, the young boy who worked the clock to school and they thought it was a bomb? Oh, I don't remember what to say. Okay, but it was a young boy um, in, I think, elementary school or high school. He made a clock, he brought it to school. Teacher thought it was a bomb, had him arrested. What happens? It hits social media. President Obama finds out, welcomes him to the White House. And again, just what really you may have access to. So you have unlimited possibilities really in the palm of your hand, everybody. So um, we want to go into some of his new, yeah. the, some other work? Yep. So I'll just show how, how it all happened. So as the protest started, he started snapping photos of people in his community. In the video, he said he was in the crowd as all of this was going on, and his mom saw him on CNN, which is like, you know, you know CNN, television station, um, news, right. one of the major news. And she said his mother called him on the cell phone and was like, I see you on CNN right now with the protesters. What are you doing there? And so he told his mother, I'm with the protesters. I'm safe. I'm protected. They're not treating me like other photographers, right? So he, he felt that he had this sort of way in because he wasn't, quote unquote, part of the media, right? So he's now in the crowd. He's shooting these photos, not thinking anything of it. Hashtag post it. One of the protesters here. It's a square format image. Woman in the middle, com composed really well. You see the emotion with the tear. The t-shirt, Justice for Freddie Gray, who's the young man who was killed um, while traveling with police officers on the way to jail. So everybody, if you don't know the story of Freddie Gray, he was arrested, he wasn't shot, and while he was in transport to jail, um, his spine got severed, so he was slammed, you know, was somewhere in the actual police van, um, and on the, way to, on the way to jail, and you know what, his spine was severed and he died. And he was in, I think he was his late twenties, I believe, right? Oh, okay. He was in his late twenties. So that's that's the story. And that's what sparked the protest. That's what sparked the whole protest. Because he was in the back of this police truck. He was arrested and, and he, he was handcuffed in the back. Handcuffed. And I think that he was saying that he needed help while he was in the back. And I think the truck must have turned or something like that. And his spine snapped. And the police didn't do what they needed to do to get him the appropriate, the appropriate care. And yeah. he ended up dying while in police custody. So it was a huge deal amongst other people who were killed while in the hands of police right. officers this past year. So <clears throat> Devin was on the ground, protest rioted, protest started, erupted, and we have him now posting photos, right? Conflict between police on one end of the frame, protesters on the other end of the frame. He pulls his phone back and he's just showing this conflict between the two sides, right? You see the media organization in the middle, and so it also adds that little element of all that tension. Yeah, something else I want to speak about, everybody, um, with this work that you're seeing. The next great thing about this work and this man, and, and really something for you to be inspired by, he is not working for the press or the media, so he does not have a press credential or ID. So he is doing this, okay, all on his own, without any authorization from city, state, newspaper, media, nobody. What did he choose to do? 
he chose to, he looked like everybody else. So how people are dressed, you know what, carrying himself the same way as he does in his community, blending in. And you know what, he got the work done. So don't think that, okay, you can only do good work, that you need this necessarily credential. Because I can tell you, the work that I've done, Ruddy has done, a good percentage of it, I mean, we've never had credentials. Never. And the thing is this, when you carry yourself like a professional, you know when there's times when you just be discreet, you're quiet, you know what, you think, you move stealth, and you know what, paying attention to what's happening, and then you just make your images quietly. You don't need to bring any attention to you, just go about your work. Police officer, tight shot, so he's messing, he's doing all sorts of different shots in the process, even though it's still just going to Instagram. He's playing with framing as well. So we talked about the tight shot, the medium shot, the long shot, composition, this is more of a tight shot, right on the police officer. Overhead shot, so he's still playing with the different elements. Tight shot, now he wants you to see the calamity between the police and the protesters in the same space, right? You get a sense of place as it's going on. It got a little tense, right? People started coming out, um, white people in the community started coming out and fighting with the protesters, right? So racial slurs were said, people said stuff back, and it got a little tense, so he's showing this as well. He wanted to show a balance. There he, you go. He showed a balance. He really was out there every single day of the mm -hmm. protest and, and not only got this, but you know, got kids. Yep. Photographed kids and to show that it wasn't just a bunch of angry young men out there, but it was like a lot of different kinds of people out there protesting. Right. You have this a beautiful photo of a young boy and you see the police in the background kind of out of focus right and so your focus goes directly to this young boy who's sort of looking up at his it's almost like he's looking at his future in a way and it's got the police band there and it's you know he's close but he's playing with exposure he's playing with depth of field this yep. was very intentional you know so he's playing with these different elements you see fathers with children out yep. there right so once again, this child has his hands up in protest as well. Um, he's showing everybody on the scene. He's trying to show you different elements. You also see a white protester behind the guy. You know, so it's not just all black people, it's people coming together and fighting the injustices of these, these young black men being, being That's right. harmed by police officers. Right. What Devin Allen also did was he felt that it was just and when he saw on CNN or in the media that you just saw people protesting and fighting, but he knew in his community that people were also sweeping up and cleaning up, right, in the mornings. After the protest, people were also cleaning. People were also fixing their neighborhoods back up, and no one was showing that in the news, he felt like. He didn't see it, so he wanted to show people sweeping. These three young men in their own neighborhood, one has a broom. But it still did get messy, of course. right? This is a tighter shot. He chose not to focus on the face of the individual, but just on the motion of this foot and the smashing of the police car, right? So you have motion, um, you have all sorts of layers. You see the people in the back. He got the people in the back cheering in a way. Um, and you get a sense of just how crazy and hectic everything was, right? In this square frame. So then as he's taking photos, he's also uploading the photos. So you go from taking the photo, then he uploads it, right? right. Then with he has, he has a caption, which is also important. We talk about caption for a sense of information, not just posting a photo, but giving it context. He says, my people are tired and are fighting back in a rage. Hashtag Baltimore, hashtag RIP Freddie Gray, hashtag Black Lives Matter, hashtag pray for Baltimore, and then he hashtagged his name. So how did the people of Time Magazine find him? One of the photo editors during the time of this protest was looking up the hashtag Baltimore to see if anybody was pushing any work from it. And as they were looking for Baltimore, they kept seeing these photos by Devin Allen because he used these hashtags and that's how his work was discovered. 
So what I wanted to say, we spoke about it earlier, is how technology really working for you. So the kind of digital camera this guy has, it has a built-in Wi-Fi. So it has a built-in Wi-Fi, and he can actually transfer the photos straight to his phone, and then he could edit, and then boom, send them out just that quickly. So never once uploading his Not needing a computer, a exactly. Computer. Not needing a computer. So this is how some technology, you know what, can really work for you. Again, he posts a photo with a caption, what media don't want you to see? A peaceful conversation being held on the front lines. Once again, a hashtag RIP Freddie Gray, hashtag Baltimore. And so he's basically saying, there's a peaceful conversation happening between protesters and the police. As you can see here, he says, this is what people in the media don't want you to see. This is happening in my neighborhood. So he's showing the 360 degree, remember we talking about being balanced. How do you go out and shoot a protest and how do you show all sides? This photographer not only showed you protesters smashing the cars, protesters sweeping up, but also protesters speaking with police officers in a peaceful manner. Yes. So spending time and getting all sides of the story and not just, That's right. not just one side. Just not one perspective, a range of emotions. A range of the stories range happening. range of perspective, exactly. And then this too, this is a police officer. You see him tearing up, right? His caption, as his eyes watered, I wonder the thoughts running through his head. Yes, police have done us wrong, but not all are evil. And this picture shows that. So he's showing again, 360 degrees, all sides of the story. This police officer is watching this happen and he's tearing up in his eyes because he's probably overwhelmed by all of it as well. Devin didn't just say, oh, I don't want to show police officer having emotion. I just want to show them as these terrible people. He said, no, I want to show this balanced. I want to show that police officers are also being affected by this. And I'm going to show that this police officer is, is feeling this emotion as well. And this was tough for him to watch these people going through this. And this is a tight shot. Motion, right? The kids running. His caption, they wanted to shut the city down. They wanted to show you the power we hold and we got the point across. No Bless justice, you. no peace. Once again, he's hashtagging all of these Baltimore. We saw this photo. He says, Baltimore is my home. I was born and raised here and all my loved ones are here. So I wanna thank everyone for their repost comments, likes, and he's thanking people for sharing his work. He says, today was a beautiful day. So you feel him going through this, right? You really feel like you're on this journey with him and every day he's posting photos. A man on his knees, he says, pray, pray with us, pray for us, Baltimore. The photo that we saw earlier, their neighborhood is where everything took place. They are out cleaning their streets the news should be asking these guys how they feel. And then as this is happening, people are leaving comments. What you don't see here is people are also leaving comments and Devin is also responding. So people are like, hey, how are you? How can I help you? And he's responding and he's going back and forth. So this level of dialogue is happening. People from all over the world are talking to Devin in a way that has never been able to happen before, right? Yep. So more protesters, Freddie didn't die in vain, civil rights today. And then this is Devin's hand, and he has a tattoo that says F slash 1.8. What does that mean? <laughs> so he's so passionate about his work. Devin has multiple tattoos on his hand, one being on his fist, the power to the people fist, and he has an F stop, meaning 1.8. More light, and All it's right. open the widest the it can The widest it can go. So right. it's F 1.8 letting in a lot of light, right? right? So that's his tattoo. He says, I document while I protest. I have yet to miss a march. I'm so tired, but I won't stop. Protest all day and I go to work at night. So while he's out with the protesters during the day, at night he's going to his job where he's working. And he, helps, he was helping um, at a, working at a nursing home, helping old people at nighttime. That's what he was doing. He says, I never sleep. So he's doing the protest, he's documenting the protest, but he's also sharing a little bit about who he is in the process. So you get a feeling as to who Devin Allen is. So you have more, <coughs> you're showing a mix of white and black people together, the beauty and fighting for what is beautiful. We love Baltimore. A soon to be queen, he documents children, like I said. So the story behind this photo that he posted, 
right? He took it, snap, he posts, we are sick and tired, and then he moves on, right? This guy is running and he just snaps it really quick, pop, 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 uploads it, hashtag Baltimore. This was the photo that was seen and shared around the world. It was then published on Time Magazine, huge spread. Um, and then they put on the cover, America 1968, and they slash 1968 and put 2015, because exactly. that happened 2015. The importance of history, everybody. This photograph looks like it's from, you know, what, almost 50 years ago. So from Instagram to Time. To Time Magazine. Just that simple, his life hasn't been the same since. Exactly. I don't think he's working at the nursing home anymore. And then he shares the cover on his Instagram account and says, I'm crying right now. This is history, Baltimore for all of us. I have nothing to say right now. I don't know what to say. Hashtag, we love Baltimore. Hashtag, RIP, Freddie Gray. That's Devin Allen's work. And I um, wanted to share with you guys because it's really an amazing story. And you, if you are on Instagram, you should follow him by DVNLLN. Um, because you can follow his travels and just to see just how incredible his story has been um, for the past year. It's been truly inspirational Very. for a lot of people, a lot of young people particularly who are starting photography.